Okay, what a glorious day. All right, I'm in one of my favorite places to work because um, these owners love plants, love plant diversity, and have a ton of native plants coupled with their cultivated plants. I am going to go to the negative again because, you know, I'm working with plant pathology and diseases, so it's hard for me not to focus on the negative. I want to point out this beautiful hemlock which tried to save, uh, but under conditions of growing a lawn like this, it is impossible to save the hemlock. By the way, that volcano mulching has been turned into donuts to stop the root girdling. Um, that's because hemlocks have particular soil requirements. They don't, you might have noticed, they grow really well in duff, big duff, um, on steep slopes lots of erosion, uh, soils that can range from um, challenging clays to more promising nutritional environments. But if you're applying a consistent dose of pesticides and high nitrogen and phosphorus fertilizers, then it doesn't matter the microbes that I add, they will not survive. Um, and also trees like this hemlock are going to suffer the consequences of growing in an environment that's overwatered for them. They like to dry out a little bit, is over fertilized, and due to the pesticides that are applied, they don't have the microbial partners, which are also incredibly important for hemlocks. So I really wish that we could come to a new aesthetic for lawns, which is probably why I'll never work for an, as an extension specialist for turf. But there are turfs out there that we could switch to that are not so high input, but we would have to change our aesthetic about what beauty is. And that's an interesting concept, right? Because beauty is very, very subjective. I find this vista quite beautiful, but I could find another vista with native grasses um, and a different, uh, not, not just palette of plants, but composition, also beautiful. Uh, that would allow me or this person who owns this property to grow uh, hemlocks if they so chose. 